Hello there, YouTube. I am Necrostevo. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. And it is time for yet another battle. In the Pokemon Premier League Season 2, week number 5. This week, the Victorian Shadows will be going up against Onesie Bennett, coach of the wonderful Solihull Skarmors. Now, this is one of those matchups that goes all the way back to the beginning of the Pokemon Premier League. Of course, we're going to start off with our normal team builder, but if you do not want to stick around for that, be sure to look out for the timestamp in the description to jump right into the battle. I was incredibly excited for the opportunity to meet Alex on the battlefield once again. He is the reason that I am in this season of the Pokemon Premier League. Thank you, Alex, for that message initially inviting me. That was great. Of course, of course that means in this matchup, we have to bring all the power that we can for this matchup. Well, this is exactly what you need. Okay, now power it up. Look, he's moving, it's working. Now, really quickly, you can see Alex's team up on the screen. So a brief review of his team. He is running a rain team. So much like last week, it is time for yet another weather war. He's asking for more! Turn it up! He has access to Ogre Pond in all of its forms. That means he has access to Wellspring, the regular Teal Mask form, the Cornerstone form. He can bring the Fire form to take advantage of my son if he wants to. After that, he has Arcaludon? Arcaludon. I, that is a newer Pokemon for the DLC as well. Followed by Zapdos, Claude Sire, Urshifu Rapid Strike, Talonflame, Politoed, Whimsicott, Basque Legion, in both the male and the female forms, Oricorio in all four of its forms, Golduck, and Wigglytuff. His Terra Captains are Politoed, which could be possibly water, dragon, or grass. Whimsicott can be fairy, um, steel, or ghost. And then the Golduck can go with water, stellar typing, or grass. This is the first opponent that I've faced who could even possibly bring a stellar type Pokemon for their Terra Captain. Because of the sheer breadth of options this rain team could bring against me, I went into the matchup focusing down what I thought would be the most likely things that he would bring because I could not prep for everything here. Between two of these Pokemon having four separate forms, Basque Legion having two different forms, uh, there was just a lot of variables. With Basque Legion, the male form is more physically oriented and the female form has higher special attacking stats and they both get Swift Swim. Or Corio, depending on the form, changes the type and then the type, whether it's Ghost or Ghost Flying, Psychic Flying, Fire Flying, or Electric Flying, all of them get um, Quiver Dance and they all get Revelation Dance to take advantage of that secondary attack type. Other Pokemon like the Ogre Pond, the Arcaludon, and the Zapdos are very flexible in defensive or offensive sets. And utility type Pokemon like Whimsicott and Politoed can very easily run offensive sets as well as defensive sets. And Talonflame can kind of do that too. Generally, you do see Urshifu and Claude Sire and more Urshifu being physically offensive and Claude Sire being defensive, but there are just too many things here. So I went into this going, okay, he's probably going to bring Ogre Pond in the cornerstone mode because that is a free focus sash for him. I could also see Ogre Pond with the Wellspring mode because if he ran some sort of weird, especially defensive assault vest thing, then my Walking Wake's water type moves would basically bounce off of it and the wellspring mode actually has water absorb so i'd be forced to use dragon type moves our caladon i have honestly never fought in battle and it is a steel dragon type that evolves from duraludon with the rain up its signature move electro shot 
does not need a charge turn and he gets that special attack boost and can immediately hit me with it. Um, but really versus my team, because of things like Terrakion and Crocodile and to a lesser extent Zeb Stryka and Orthworm, I thought that he might bring something really bulky on that set. And so I was kind of more prepared for defensive Zapdos and Arcaludon alongside Rain from Politoed, one of the two Swift Swimmers and Ogre Pond is kind of what I built the team for. So with that in mind, let's review the six that I brought to this matchup. Who's that Pokemon? First off, I went with the Choice Scarf Venusaur here with Sludge Bomb, Earth Power, Giga Drain, and Sleep Powder. I just had enough speed to outspeed a Talonflame that was trying to speed creep my max speed Zep Strika. So Zep Strika tops out at 116 speed. And that's the fastest thing on my team, so there's really no reason for his Talonflame to run more speed than that uh, if he was trying to do that. So the idea here with Choice Scarf, though, is that it would enable Venusaur to pick off some of these Pokemon or just go straight for a Sleep Powder if things are getting annoying. Um, Sludge Bomb spams very well against this team outside of just the Arcaludon and the Clod Sire, and neither of those really want to be put to sleep, and they're not very likely to run something like Safety Goggles in this matchup. Um, also, Zapdos loves to switch in on Venusaur, and that's another Pokemon that I could either put to sleep or just hit with a Sludge Bomb. After that, I did see that Zep Strika had a phenomenal matchup here. We once again are going to go with Terra Ice Zep Strika with a Life Orb, going with Volt Switch, Terra Blast Ice, Super Cell Slam, and High Horsepower. With this coverage, we hit every single Pokemon on his team super effectively in one form or another. He's smiling, he's smiling! And, because of the speed tiers, Zep Strika is really only afraid of something like Talonflame. And um, I would swap out from Talonflame anyway. With the way his team was set up here, I was really expecting it to be an offensive Talonflame, maybe even Specs with the rain. But um, yeah, it's, I love Zep Strika's matchup here. Walking Wake, I ended up going with a Hurricane Scald Draco Meteor Roar set, with the idea being that. If I can get up at least one spike here, I can just roar him around and really interrupt his ability to use his rain and also interrupt his ability to swap things into Walking Wake. To get that spike up, I would have to do that with my Orthworm. And Orthworm this week will have spikes, body press, endure, and rock tomb with the rocky helmet. Almost max HP, max defense on my Orthworm and almost max HP I'm sorry, max speed, max special attack on the Walking Wake. Orthworm here, I put endure and um, Rocky Helmet because I figured it'd be in on either the um, Urshifu Rapid Strike. Urshifu Rapid Strike signature move is Surging Strikes and it hits three times. And so whether he's clicking close combat against Orthworm or he's clicking Surging Strikes, I wanted to be able to nab one more turn of Rocky Helmet on him. This also applies to a lesser extent for something like the Talonflame trying to retain its Gale Wings. If it uses U-Turn on me, then it's going to take that chip. And same thing with Ogre Pond using U-Turn or to a lesser extent, Ivy Cudgel. All those were prime targets to switch in uh, Orthworm on and take advantage of the contact damage. After that, we have Galarian Slowking here, and I'm going to try out the Eject Button. Eject Button is an item where if you get hit by a move and you survive, it immediately swaps you out. So here I have Trick Room, Calm Mind, Slack Off, and Psychic, with the idea being, okay, um, we just want to take a hit, and then depending on what hits me, immediately go out to the offensive check to it, or, um, now that I've lost my item, I'm less susceptible to a knockoff, and that means I can possibly set up a trick room alongside his ran and a Swift Swimmer not outspeeding my Galarian Slowking. I was very worried about Basket Legion with my team, because with the rain up, Basket Legion has a very nice time against my team. But since I couldn't prepare for male or female, I figured just options to either put the trick room up or uh, have something like Scarf Venusaur for it outside of the rain, one of my best options there. My last Pokemon is Terrakion. Terrakion is running Eject Pack. Instead of Eject Button, Eject Pack makes it so that if your stats get lowered, you immediately swap out. So Terrakion can lower its own stats through close combat, which lowers its defense and special defense. That'll allow me to immediately use the close combat and then swap out into something else. Uh, I was worried about using that into something like a Claude Sire and allowing him to set up entry hazards for free on his own, but that's where the eject pack is really nice because it'll allow me to immediately get out of there and go into something else. Close combat, Sacred Sword, Quick Attack, and Stone Edge are the moves on my Terrakion. Just because I really only need close combat and stone edge and quick attack is just there in case he runs Golduck, for example i can do a good amount of that 
in in the rain um, just because quick attack is a priority move so that is our horde for the week we have an immaculate matchup here rain versus sun and i'm not even bringing sun uh, why i'm a rainy day guy Just enjoy it. Let me know. Do you prefer the rain or do you prefer the sun? It's just that you're not a, a star like me. These last few days have been very rainy and it has just been very enjoyable to not have the sun burning my retinas. Does he look happy? Nah, he looks more like a bulldog staring at the sun. Let's get into the battle. Thank you all so much for being here today. All right, so we are here to start the battle, and it wouldn't be me if I didn't forget to hit record. This time, at least I didn't miss the first turn. He leads off with his Ogre Pawn, and it is the cornerstone mode, and I led with Orthworm. I really didn't want to predict starting out here, and I thought he even might try to set up his own spikes or set up Swords Dance or something, and so I just went for spikes there, because that was one of my main priorities for the battle. He does just get a taunt off, and so here I just decided to click body press because if he stayed in, I could at least go ahead and break that sturdy on him. Uh, he does take the opportunity to go out to a Zapdos and that body press actually did a decent little chunk. So I was proud of Orthworm for that. And I did not get paralyzed, which was very great. My dedicated swap in here, expecting him to know that he can't go for an electric type move because I have Zep Shrika with motor drive here. I'm going to go into my Galarian Slow King, which is uh, very specially defensive and I knew if he hit me then I could immediately take the opportunity to swap out of something else but Dude. if he tried to set up I don't know a tailwind a sub or something right. like that I might have an opportunity to hit him you'll see that I changed away from the uh, trick room set I decided to go with psychic and ice beam with chili reception instead of using trick room the idea here is that if he does bring rain which you will see he did not bring rain. <laughs> he did. There is no polytoad on his side of the field. Um, but uh, the idea was with Chili Reception, I could interrupt his rain with that instead of relying on Trick Room or something. He does go for Heat Wave, which does force me out because of my own eject button, which is just what I wanted. And here I can take the opportunity to either go into Zep Shrika and immediately Terra up and go for the Terra Blast Ice, or I could go out to Terrakion and hit him with the Stone Edge. With Zep Strika, I do think that that's an overall nine. Nine. More simple play. No. It does let I him swap other Pokemon point. like his Arcaludon in. But if his Arcaludon comes in, I depending on the set, I can hit him with the high horsepower. What I do have to be careful about is that the Arcaludon using the high horsepower, um, or just any hit really, as a means to boost its defense to a point to where I have to switch around a bunch to deal with it. So we do just go out to the Zep Strika. We're going to go ahead and go for the Terra type into the Ice type. I could have gone for Volt Switch here, but I just wanted to get damage off on the Zapdos when I could. He does just bring in the Arcaladon, which is good news to have this early on, just because I need to know what type of damage this thing is going to take from my moves. <laughs> Terra Blast Ice with a Life Orb, if he's not really bulky, does a very easy, like, near half. But here you can see we don't even really get over 30%, so he's definitely bulky. I don't see Life Orb, or rather I don't see Leftover, so is he a Salt Vest with some sort of investment somewhere? Not sure. I do know that after that Stamina Boost based off of the Terra Blast damage, a High Horsepower will not finish him off. And so we just swap out here to my Galarian Slow King, and... That was a good swap because Flash Cannon would have been super effective in that situation against Zep Strike Up. Now, not knowing what he was going to go for, I went for Chili Reception expecting him to switch. But Chili Reception went before his move. And I was like, why did I go first? Oh, wait, he must be using Dragon Tail. Dragon Tail is a negative priority move. And so is Chili Reception. Um, but here, Dragon Tail will move last by the priority brackets. And so I went out to my Orthworm just to resist the Dragon Tail and to get a little chip damage on him with the Rocky Helmet. And now his Dragon Tail send me, sends, sends me right back into my own Galarian Slow King. So we're back where we started. 
Uh, instead of going for the chili reception this time, I was like, should I just attack? Ugh. Okay, let's just do the same thing. And so I do go for a chili reception again. I kind of wish I had thrown off an attack because the way he just raw brought in the talon flame, I was like, oh man, that, that feels like an offensive talon flame that he was just hoping to get in when I was either recovering HP or using chili reception again. And I needed to break the gale wings on the talon flame. Talonflame being a fire flying type is a nice opportunity for me to take advantage of here. So I do go out into Terrakion just to scare him out with the rock slide. He could outspeed me and go for a will-o'-wisp or uh, just go for like a raw U-turn. I wasn't really sure. I at least wanted to force him into that option with the rock slide because even after he burned me, I could KO him unless he were really defensive. Um, so here he just goes straight for U-turn and I was like, ah, that confirms that this is probably a more offensive Talonflame, because if he had the Will-O-Wisp, he would have gone for it right there. And um, I did lock into Rock Slide, and Rock Slide still would do a decent chunk to Urshifu, except for this is some sort of weird leftovers, bulky Urshifu. Seeing leftovers and how little that Rock Slide did, I was actually expecting it to be like a sub bulk up with Drain Punch type variant, um, just to come in, kind of absorb a hit, and then be really annoying. Uh, especially because bulk up it would allow him to maybe go for aqua jet or even surging strikes in the rain um, but again no rain so i wasn't really sure from that damage roll i was like is that a bulky assault vest urshifu i really wasn't sure uh, i do hard swap out at the same time that he doubles out as well and so i went out to venusaur thinking he was going to go for a water type move and um, here he just u-turns again and that confused me a little bit because I was like okay if he had the flying type move he should have gone for it there but also he doesn't know that I'm scarfed so I thought for sure that he was just expecting me to swap Venus out which is why he went for the u-turn I just stayed in and I went for a sludge bomb hoping to again I'm trying to break the gale wings on the talon flame that was my aim that was my goal Zapdos comes in and takes a sludge bomb and does not get poisoned unfortunately and so I just go back out into my galarian sloking because it's a nice safe swap into it now he pulls another swap out at this point and goes back out to his ogre pond and at this point i was like okay i'm just gonna take damage on this thing uh, unfortunately that means that i have to let him get up his huge layer of spikes this is going to be a pain because i did not bring any removal this week and i was not able to sufficiently pressure to keep him off the field um, but ice beam does a ton of damage to ogre pond and another one will knock it out and that does kind of force him out here and he goes out into golduck and um, since he ends up going out into Golduck, my snow goes away and I was like, okay, we're just gonna hit him again with another ice beam. Golduck doesn't really take much damage. And of course you saw cloud nine when it came in. Cloud nine gets rid of weather effects. And so this was, I thought that the Golduck would maybe set up its own rain manually and try to sweep. But between him taking very little damage from Ice Beam and then uh, very little damage from Psychic, while well, having knockoff, I was like, okay, he's probably Assault Vested to swap into my, um, my special attackers. That is okay, because I just need to whittle him down. Golduck doesn't have any way to recover its own HP. And here he does go for a flip turn after knocking off just to see what type of damage that that would do. But Golduck is not really known for its physical attack prowess, and so it doesn't do much Five. damage. And I was just going to stay in and keep on throwing off attacks if to see how much I could whittle down Golduck. So now at this point, someone we've gathered please, some information about his team. Please, he looks to have some sort of defensive um, Zapdos. I am unsure what type of set the Urshifu has, but it's definitely bulky. It looks like some sort of bulky or assault vested Golduck and um, his Ogre Pond, which was more like a lead set. Here he goes back out after the flip turn and goes into the Arcaludon. And I didn't want to try to swap something in on the Dragon Pulse or the Flash Cannon, especially if I guess incorrectly. And so we go for Chili Reception again and that'll get my HP back. And um, here we have a decision. My Orthworm had enough HP that I could bring it in and maybe set up a hazard. Alternatively, I could go out into my Terrakion and throw off a close combat, and even if he swapped out, then I would get my eject pack. Um, I could also go out to Zepstrika and go for a Stomping Tantrum. So I had a few different things that I could do from this position because he does not have that stamina boost. I decided to go out to Terrakion here just to threaten him out. 
he is finally getting towards the range to where basically anything from any of my teammates will be able to take him out depending on his bulk investment. Now, I thought for sure he would predict me to predict him to swap out into one of his flyers. And so I just went for close combat there thinking he'd stay in, but he makes a great mid play here and goes out to the Urshifu. And from that close combat damage, close combat on a non bulky, non defensive Urshifu easily does half. And that basically did negligible damage for how much it should have done. Uh, I am happy that my eject pack swapped me out of there because I didn't want to take uh, an aqua jet at minus one defense if he had it. But since it did so little damage, I was like, well, I'm not really sure what I should go into at this point. I decided after running some calcs to see how much um, an Urshifu would do something like my Orthworm or uh, my Venusaur I know is probably faster at this point just because if he's bulky, he's not gonna be speed invested. So I did take Four. the opportunity to go out into if my I'm um, going down, Venusaur I'm on going this down turn. Fighting. You saw there that that timer was really going down on that turn. I was just furiously trying to calc to see what speed tier he might be at or how much damage I could do. I wanted to make sure I could KO with a Giga Drain. Here would have been a great opportunity to also click Sleep Powder just because he has not revealed any items that would have necessarily helped him out with that. Um, but I just stay in here and I go for Giga Drain. He goes back out into the Arcaludon and I would have loved to get off a of Sleep Powder right there on this thing because Giga Drain does no damage and he gets a free stamina boost off of it. I'm locked into Giga Drain and he doesn't know that, but that also forces me to go out to my Galarian Slow King. And so really the, the more optimal play in that situation would have been to go out to Orthworm and to force him to go for close combat while I set up a layer of spikes. Spikes would have gone, I really wanted those spikes in this match. They would have just gone so much further as far as damage output goes than what I was getting from trying to swap around and use Chili Reception. And you can also see the spikes that he set up on me are wearing down my team a lot as well. So I do bring out Orthworm on his attack and it, it does more than I anticipated. I thought since he was so bulky that it was gonna do less damage than that. And I was like, oh man, if he has a coverage room now, he's gonna swap to it. And at this point, remember, I've only seen Dragon Tail, Dragon Pulse, and Flash Cannon. So he has a, a secret third move that I'm not privy to yet. And um, I really was not sure what to do here. <laughs> and so once again, I went back to the calcs and I was like, okay, I think Galarian Slowking can take two hits from him after a layer of spikes based off of the damage that we've seen so far. And so I kind of wasted Orthworm's HP going out into it like that. Um, but I, I, my, my thinking was that I could have gotten up a layer of spikes for free. Not but I end up going back out to Slowking and at this range, I was like, okay, good. I can definitely live another hit from him and go for slack off. And I was very happy that I bought, brought slack off to this battle because it meant that I could recover HP without being relegated to switching to recover HP. So we undo a lot of the damage that he does with his dragon pulses there. And I was very tempted here once again, just to throw off an attack, right? He doesn't have any way to recover his HP unless that last move that he has is rest. Um, but I also wanted to make sure that I'm at a pretty decent amount of HP there myself. So I ended up going for another slack off instead of attacking him. And now that I'm at full HP, I expected him to swap out, but he stays in and goes for flash cannon. And I could have just stayed in and hit him with a couple of psychic type moves or even an ice beam or two. Um, again, I just needed to whittle his HP down a little bit more um, in order for Venusaur's earth power or um, Zep Strika's high horsepower after a one stamina boost or a close combat to take him out here. So after the chili reception, I did go back out into my Terrakion here. And here I thought for sure he was going to stay in. Now we've had a couple of 50-50s in this situation already. And with his HP being as low as it was, I didn't think that he would swap out. And so I went for Sacred Sword. I did seriously consider going for Rock Slide. But my thinking was he could let the Arcaludon go down and then bring in something for free and take advantage of my Terrakion. But he brings in the Talon Flame, takes negligible damage from the Sacred Sword, and he gets the burn from the Flame Body. Ah, oh, man, that was such a good swap in on his part, and I just really got punished for going for a contact move right there. Flame Body 
functionally neuters my Terrakion. With the burn cutting my attack, I might even struggle to KO the Arcaludon after a stamina boost from this range. So since Terrakion has kind of been um, really hampered in its offensive capabilities because of the burn, I'm just going to stay in and throw off as much damage as possible uh, against the Ogre Pond coming in. Um, if I had just stayed in and gone for a close combat, I actually had a shot to KO it as it came in there, but I really wanted to KO that um, Talonflame. Because now, after seeing how little damage the Talonflame took from the Sacred Sword, I was like, wait, is he like a fast, defensive Talonflame? Because he should have taken more damage from that. Um, Ogre Pond finishes off my Terrakion, and that is the first Pokemon that I've had to go down this entire round, because this has just been such a, a real chess match in jockeying for position constantly in this matchup. Now here I did decide to go out into Zepstrika because I knew I could hit every single thing on his team, and if he decided to go out into the Arcaludon, then I could finish it off with high horsepower. If he decided to go out into the um, Urshifu, I could finish it off with the Supercell Slam. Like, I just wanted to stay in and throw off attacks here because switching in and out, the spikes combined with the life orb chip, I'm basically sacrificing 20% of my HP every time I want to do something. Um, so I just wanted to stay in here, and I'm not swapping out this time. And we're going to go for Supercell Slam. And, um, yeah, looking at the, the in-game matchup, Zepstrika one-shots the gold bug. Uh, Zepstrika can finish future. off the Ogre Pond. <laughs> Zepstrika can easily finish off the Arcaludon with the high horsepower. And so it really came down to what type of Zapdos did he have and what type of Talonflame did he have? Uh, so I really needed to make sure that for the last few moves, I preserve Zepstrika's HP, barring some sort of priority in the form of Gale Wings on the Talonflame, which has been broken, or Aqua Jet from the um, Golduck. I knew that Zepstrika was going to be critical in this end game. Here, since I figured, okay, the way that he brought this out, he obviously is just going to U-turn or go for maybe the flying type Brave Bird on me. And since those were his options, I decided to go out into Orthworm to take advantage of the contact damage on him. Um, he does end up U-turning, and so I get off some clean d chip damage with the Rocky Helmet once again. This gives him an opportunity to go out to the Orthworm, and here, I thought for sure he was going to try to set up his own spikes or to take advantage of me being slower again. I could have clicked Endure, but I didn't want to click Endure as he set up spikes. And if I had clicked Endure, then that would have forced him to hit me twice. But I really wanted my spikes again. So I decided to click spikes, but he just goes straight for the low kick, which is unfortunate because I really could have taken out this Ogre Pond or at least forced a trade here uh, with the Rocky Helmet damage. So my Orthworm goes down after not really attacking too much. All the damage it dealt in this battle was passive through the Rocky Helmet, which was very critical for the entirety of the match. Now with Ogre Pond in at this point, I have to make a decision. Do I want to try to bring in Zepstrika or do I want to try to bring in my um, Walking Wake? I was worried about Walking Wake being um, out of range to KO the Arcaludon. So I was like, okay, I need to get a little bit more chip on the Arcaludon because I don't have Draco Meteor. Um, I have Dragon Pulse and I have uh, Scald, expecting him to bring his reign to power up my Scald. I did not want to go for Draco Meteor because the idea was, okay, I'm going to be staying in here with my booster energy speed and I'll speeding his whole team outside of the rain. But now at this point, it's kind of time I'm going to come in with my Walking Wake, and I think he's in range. We're just going to go for that um, booster energy done. boosted Drake Dragon Pulse here. And One. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Caladon and try to see what type of damage we can do but uh that's it that's the end of the battle my timer was set to 20 minutes and I used up all of my personal 20 minutes 
and so I was out of time. Highly unfortunate. That was a very fun match. And I can't believe it went down like that. I did learn my lesson about setting a 20 minute timer, but oh man, that, <laughs> yeah. all I could say is thank you for the battle, Alex. I, I do think in the end game there between him not knowing that my Venusaur was scarfed and walking wake, um, doing a decent amount of damage with Dragon Pulse, there is a really good chance, and I think he even calped it. I'm, I'm narrating this in post, but I think he calped it. And with his investment on his Arcaludon, he always lived a Dragon Pulse for my Walking Wake. In that situation, my Walking Wake gets KO'd in return, most likely from his Dragon Pulse. And then it's kind of Zeb Strika um, versus the world from that standpoint. Now, granted, from there, Zeb Strika outspeeds his entire team, so he would need some priority somewhere to finish off Zeb Strika. But um, Zeb Strika also was at about half HP, so I would have taken spikes coming in, and then I would have had maybe four attacks with Life Orb, barring an Aqua Jet on the Gold Duck. And I did still have my um, my other Pokemon left in that matchup that I'm completely blinking on because I'm tired. But either way, I ended up taking that loss and I took the loss in the differential as well. Um, but I still enjoyed the battle. It's just rough when you run out of time, you know? It just makes you really realize that you have to be faster on these rituals. You have to take more souls more efficiently than ever before in this crazy marketplace that we have. And it's just never enough, you know? Sometimes you're just trying to be out here, doing your best, doing the rituals, and it's just not enough. So, anyways, thank you all for watching. Thank you, Onesie Bennett, for the battle. Make sure you go and check out his side. I'm sure his reaction to the timer just running out is going to be probably relief because I think Zeb Strike was going to come in and, and whoop up on him afterwards there, but we'll see. We'll see. And, and onesie, I will see you on the battlefield of the future. And I hope you all enjoy this battle video. Have a good day and thank you for watching. <laughs>